Hello everybody. It's a little dark so I need to turn on that light. So I was working um, on my goofy video on Saturday and I'm going how am I gonna do Sunday with spirit or am I gonna be talking about a couple of things came up this week for me. Um, I reconnected with an amazing good friend of mine, Janet. And she has um, just written a book. I'm going to talk more about this at the end of the video. Um, her son committed suicide. And it's her story of how she survived that. And just before I started this recording, I was watching Marie's Table. She's an amazing, amazing tarot card puller. And she's been having some issues later, uh, or in, in the past. Um, she just found out her husband has cancer. And at the end of the video where she says, I'm not leaving, but I'm probably not going to be doing reading. It's, it, I was all weepy. I was crying. She turned off her light on her table. And I'm like, no, 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 no. You can't do that. She turned it off. And I went, oh, sorry, Marie. Your light's still shining. Huh. <laughs> So that's where I'm going to go with this today. When we're in these really dark times, how do we keep our light shining? How do we keep our light on? Even though we say we're going to turn it off for a little bit, it still shines through. And it's through our friends who come in and don't let us get too down. Of course we're going to get down, but that's what gets me through. It's my friends who keep me on the right path. Let me pause this and let's ask Spirit how we can keep our light on in troubling times. Hang on. Okay. A little different spread before, but same kind of concept. Four cards, kind of what we should just be thinking about. If one of them resonates more with you, Go with that one. You can pick a card and say, that's my card. That's my card. Whatever you want to do. My Shaman Oracle deck, those are more spiritual. My Enchanted Map deck, those are more actionable. And they're not mine. They're Colette Baron Reads. She is the one that made them up. So, how do we keep our light on in troubled times? Jaguar. And it was in medicine position. This goes back to that strength card again that we had. It might have been last week. Where this is the hunter... This is the most powerful um, top predator. And it's in medicine position. So it says, know who your power is. Know what you have. But it, it may not feel like it right now. It may feel really hollow. Wild woman in medicine position. Hmm. I love this card because this is like dancing with wild abandon. Letting your heart shine. And when you look at this card, right? Looks like that heart is upside down. This card was originally in medicine position. So if you're just doing that, the heart looks right side up. 
So to me, what this card is saying, even though you're upside down, your heart is still the brightest thing in your body that is going to be shining through and giving you the strength to see through this dark time. And then we have actionable. Ha, huh. look at that coming to life. Every tragedy is different and affects people different ways. And they deal with it in different ways. And whatever and however they, they deal with it should be okay. Yet in my times of, of despair and just down to groveling, I would have people telling me how to feel. How to act. This is our own dance that we get to do. This is our own light that we get to shine. That's Marie's light. She can't shut it off. <laughs> that makes me happy to say that. She can't shut that off. And we're praying for her and her husband. I'm going to send white light out to everybody that is just dealing with so much loss and pain. We've got this pandemic that is just out of control. And I know I have people on my channel that have lost loved ones. Intention reversed. I happen to really like this card too. I love that the owl has a weed in its mouth. And I mentioned this before when I was a kid, I used to make a wish on those weeds and scatter the seeds all over the, just everywhere. My dad had come out and laugh and he goes, you know, you're scattering weeds. <laughs> he said, no, dad, I'm making a wish. What are you wishing for? I'm wishing for that you make a million dollars so that you can get a gardener to take care of the weeds. <laughs> okay. Set your intentions. Wish big. It's kind of upside down now. It's okay. You still have your light shining. You still have your heart in the right place, even though you may feel like you're upside down. And you've got the strength of the jaguar. All right. This is embrace. This is abandon. And that's just general rules. Sometimes you go, oh, no, I should embrace that. Yeah, go ahead. Let's see what it is. Embrace. Spirit. Flow. Flow in medicine. Hmm. So it goes back to me. You know, here, if this were upright, you're embracing, embracing the magic that comes when everything is just flowing right. And here, in medicine position, everything's still flowing right, it's just upside down. But it's still flowing between these two hands. It's just a different flow. So we need to embrace that different flow. And embrace the details, oh my gosh details. For me, the details kept my mind off of some of the sadness, some of the pain, some of, you know, you can get caught up in, you know, just whatever the details are, paperwork, this, that, whatever. You could get caught up in that. And it just gives your mind a little break. It gives your heart a break from all the sadness. 
what you should abandon medicine wheel in medicine position hmm so with this card you have the four corners you have the snake the eagle the leopard and the hummingbird and in this four directions to the north south east and west each of those directions when we pray to those directions and when we honor our ancestors it gives us clarity it gives us comfort it gives us stability it grounds us it allows to let go of things gracefully and to accept things new that are coming into our lives and being in medicine position well it suggests to me that maybe we're not doing that as well as we can be doing it are we blaming somebody for this or are we giving it up to the four directions and saying what is supposed to happen will happen oh, and that's that's hard to do that is hard to do sometimes but let's not forget to meditate and pray commitment this is and what I'm getting from this and it's kind of hard to explain for me but when somebody reaches out and touches you they give you this light they pass on their light to you and it's all about love and here it's like a desert right behind them but what comes from that touch and from that light and that and that heart space just love flows all around and this is there's some kind of butterfly hummingbird something with wings I can't really make it out so expect surprises expect the ups and downs but know that when those people touch you even with sending love and light that it does touch you so with that I send you love and light find your own heart space and your own wild woman come to life as only you know how to do it on your time be strong find your flow don't forget to pray don't forget to honor everything that comes to you and everything that you should let go of and know that even if no one's physically touching your hands when they send you love and light allow it to open up your heart set your intentions really clear and sometimes they're not so clear but just make a wish and send it off it's on its way oh and I forgot to tell you about my friend Janet's book Janet's son um, had a head injury from working out at the gym and that head injury caused delusions he got arrested he got put in jail he got um, 
They gave him drugs, tried to settle him down, but he was very delusional. And he ended up killing himself right after he got out of prison, or jail, I should say. Um, he ended up killing himself. And this is Janet's story of how she coped with it, how she let her heart shine in her own light. And she is sending out this seed of intention so that she can help other people who are dealing with this type of loss. And it's her journey. And she asked me to do a reading on it. She goes, is my book going to be successful and help people deal with this, with this pain? And when she said success, it wasn't about money, although it does cost a lot of money for her to publish this book. It was more about helping people. So... Um, if you feel the need, um, check out Janet's book. I'm halfway through it. It is kind of sad, halfway through it. But when the second half, I'm really looking forward to, because here she contacts um, a couple of psychics who had contacted Brian. And when she asked me to read for her, this is really crazy. I don't dream a lot. I had a dream of her son. So that was pretty powerful. Anyway, I hope she doesn't mind me saying this. I don't think she will. And that's that. Okay, you guys. Peace and love.